On August 29th, 1997, Skynet, a computer system built to protect us, became self-aware. It viewed humanity as a threat to its existence and decided to act. Judgment Day, as we eventually called it, marked the beginning of the war against the machines. Skynet attacks happened almost daily, but the attack that happened on that day was like nothing we'd seen before. Come on, come on. Where are the others? Where's the rest of the resistance? I don't know. Ah! Ah! No! No, no! no. Private Jacob, I know who you are. We can't do this right now, kiddo. I don't want to go with no, you. No, you don't, but we can't stay here. Who's there? Oh, thank God. You're from the Resistance. See, Patrick? He's going to help us. No, they're going to get us. Please, you need to help me. My little brother, he just won't listen. I'm not going. Leave me alone. I said, leave me alone. I know you're scared, but staying here is not an option. I'll protect you and your sister, okay? Okay. Thank you. I'm Jennifer, by the way. I've heard there's an evacuation point near here. Yeah, I know. My people are organizing it. We're heading there right now. I'll take us there. Come on, let's go. Terminators! Get down! Get down! What's going on? Shh. Oh, you're from the Resistance. Thank you for making sure that Jennifer and Patrick got here safe. Are you the guy I spoke to on the radio? Nah, I, I don't think so. I haven't been able to reach anybody for a while now, but listen. I know that Colin wants us to go, but I don't know how I feel about leaving anyone behind. Jennifer just got here, and you said yourself that you heard someone on the radio. There could be other people out there. Don't you think somebody should go and look for them? I mean, you're from the Resistance. It's your call. I'll search for other survivors. Good. I'll get the bus ready. Before you go, talk to Erin. She might be able to get you a med kit. Oh, oh, and take this. You'll probably need it. I've come to get you. There's an evacuation point not far from here. You need to get there, fast. No, I'm not leaving. Have you seen what's out there? That, that giant spider, it's going to get us. You have to destroy it. I already took care of it, it's safe now. Oh, thank God, thank you. Jennifer, what's the hold up? Team, go, go, go! Hold on, we're getting out of here. Mark's about to pass out. We need to stop soon. Okay, we'll do that.
I don't think we've been properly introduced. I'm Ryan. That over there is Eric. She's a doctor of the group. Jennifer's a scavenger, and Colin, well, you can ask him yourself what he thinks he does. I'm Jacob. I'm a private from the Resistance. Pacific Division. Pacific? You're a long way from home. What you doing down here? My entire division was wiped out. I'm trying to get in touch with the South Division. I've got a message for Commander Baron. So it's true? The Annihilation Line's coming? It wasn't the Annihilation Line. It was something else. Then what was it? To be honest, I'm not sure myself. God damn it! That's as far as this piece of shit will go. Let's get off the road. Pull up over there. We got some time on them, so let's not lose our heads. I'll be on the fucking lookout for tin cans. Aaron, you do what you think is best for Mark. I'll see what I can do about the bus. Jacob, it might take a while, so can you look inside and see if it's safe to stay? Sure. Jennifer, would you help me? Sure. Ooh-wee. All this for us? Oh, did I startle you? Are you always such an asshole? You know what? Now that I think about it, I guess I am. Since we're stuck here, I figured I'll go see if anything's creeping around the corner. I hear that you're looking for the resistance, and where I'm heading, they used to have an outpost. I wouldn't mind backup while I'm out there. So what do you say? Buddies? Talk to Ryan and see if he needs anything. I'm moving out now. Let's meet at the bridge. And don't make me wait, will you? Hey. Thanks for earlier. If it wasn't for you, I probably would have started completely freaking out. And that wouldn't have done anyone any good. Patrick's been through a lot, you know? I guess we all have. I just wish I could find something that would take his mind off all this. At least for a moment. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Were there any resistance in Pasadena? They were stationed just outside of town since I can remember. But they moved not that long ago. We tried to convince ourselves that maybe we were safe so they didn't need to be there anymore. But apparently we were wrong. What about your father? What happened to him? He protected us from a tin can. We were able to sneak out, but he had no chance. When I looked back, he was lying there, dead on the floor. Look, I'm sorry, I, I don't think I'm ready for this. Seems a repair might take a couple days. How's it looking inside? There's a lot of supplies there. Looks like someone left them for us. Nah, seems too much of a convenience. Better keep your eyes open. But speaking of supplies, we don't have much, but we keep everything useful inside this crate. You feel free to look through and pick up what you need. Listen, I know that finding the resistance is your number one priority, but if you stumble upon a set of tools while you're out there, please bring them to me, okay? I must have lost mine during the escape. Good luck out there. Jacob Rivers, marked for termination. Are you all right, Jacob? 
Jacob! Hours later, they found me lying in front of our hideout. I made it out alive, but not all of us did. Colin's dead, and the stranger I saw is nowhere to be found. I told them about everything. I said that it wasn't safe for them to be with me. But Jennifer suggested that right now, nowhere is safe, so we might as well stick together. Everyone pulled through as we prepared for the worst. But nothing happened. Jacob? Are you awake? How long have you been sitting there? Not that long. I, I know that you're going to that hospital today, so I went on my first scavenging run. And I found something for oh, you. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you go with your sister? No. As soon as Erin heard that there's a hospital nearby, she asked Jennifer to go look for some medicine. So I, I went alone. D don't tell her that, okay? She's already at the medical district? Yep. Oh, and Ryan wanted to talk to you. Morning. Patrick came to me earlier, asking if I thought you'd like his present. When I saw that it was a single bullet, I wasn't sure if he was being helpful or if it was a warning. I figured he didn't appreciate you looking at his sister like that. How's Mark doing? Not great. We barely have any medicine left. But hopefully Jennifer will bring back some antibiotics from that hospital. How do you feel about Colin's death? What do you want me to tell you? That I feel guilty? That I care? Right now I'm a little more concerned with the living than the dead. Do you need help with anything? No, I'm fine. I had to learn to do things by myself for quite a while, sweetie. Now, tell me what did you really want to ask me? How did you know about the Annihilation Line? I heard the rumors, like everyone else. And then, like everyone else, I decided to ignore them. I was in the middle of operating on a little girl. When I had finished, I realized that we were surrounded. The machines killed most of us, but they decided to keep me alive. So, that's how I ended up in a camp. Maybe they thought it would be worth having a doctor in there. I don't know. What happens at those camps? People get tortured, experimented on, cut to pieces. I couldn't watch at first, but I soon realized that I had to do what no one else could. I had to bear witness to the atrocities. You were actually the first person that wasn't afraid to ask. They're all scared of me, like, like I'm carrying some sort of disease. But they're still coming to me for medicine. Ironic, isn't it? Do you think you could help more people by joining the Resistance? <sighs> Honey, maybe ask me that question when you finally find them. Because for now, I don't think they even exist. About that camp. What do you want to know? How did the machines communicate with you? There was this one machine. We called it Nurse Ratchet. It was designed to look almost friendly. It wore an awful, smiling, rubber human face. At the end of every week, it took the weakest of us for experimentation. My cellmate, Karen, was pregnant. I knew that was a one-way ticket to the grinder, so I had to plan an escape. What was your plan? I figured our best chance of getting out was with the bodies. That way, hypothermia was the only thing we had to worry about. The baby came early, and Karen died giving birth. She didn't even get to see her child. I had to take action. Me and one other prisoner took the child, and we got to the disposal room, where we covered ourselves with dead bodies. Then we just lay there, 
waiting for them to throw us out. And they did. They dumped us outside the camp, ready for the grinder. Did they go after you? We heard an alarm, but we were already far away. They hunted us at first, but they had more important things to do than running after two nobodies with a baby. We ran to protect her, but deep down we were preparing for the worst. Anyway, you're healthy, right? And your bones don't look broken, so stop bothering me. Hey, you're off again? I'll see you later. I'm gonna stay here and help Aaron. Jacob, thank you for finding him for me. I promise I'll take good care of him. Now, what should I call him? How about Max? That's a good name. I like that. You wanted to talk to me? Well, first of all, thank you for bringing me that toolkit. That bus should be ready in no time. Good to see you finally turn the corner. I wanted to talk to you. I'm starting to get worried about Jennifer. It's been a while since she left, and at my age, I try to worry as little as possible. If you see her out there, send her back, okay? How's that bus coming along? I'll make a run again. Don't worry about it. Besides a couple of rusty rotors, it got a whole lot of character. The question is, where do we go from here? Do you remember Judgment Day? I do. That's right. I'm that old. My memory ain't as good as it used to be. However, there are some images that stand out in my mind. My brother Tucker hitting on this lady guard or people covered in mud. But for the life of me, I can't remember the name of that band. You have a brother. I, I did. Older brother. Well, he was a ladies man. We didn't have tickets to the concert, but he knew how to charm a lady. She let us in. Well, him, I tagged along like I always did. Yeah, it was one of those outdoor festivals. When we got in, we decided to climb this metal tower to get a bit of a view of the stage, you know. So as we're watching this band play their hearts out, we see a burst of bright, ugly light. I went blind for a while. Couldn't you look away? Well, there's no escaping it. It lit up the sky, lighting every peak and ridge of the nearby mountain range. Something only a nuclear bomb could do. With my bloodshot eyes, the only other thing I could see clearly was uh, people below me being crushed. The tower we were clinging onto started shaking. It finally gave in after the shockwave from the explosion. I closed my eyes and it started falling onto the people below. Oh. Oh. What am I thinking of? I'm usually a lighthearted guy. Why don't we talk about something more positive? Oh, God, I remember the name of that band now. It was Captured by Robots. Oh, jeez. Looks like a silverfish got him. They're every scavenger's nightmare. Ooh, look. This poor guy is still holding a sound decoy. Sound decoy? You resistance guys just shoot at everything that moves, don't you? Silverfish are sensitive to noise. So, before it pops up from the ground and starts chasing, you throw a sound decoy. It'll draw any nearby silverfish away. I guess you can take it. He won't be needing it anyway. Did you hear that? That's the sound I was talking about. I don't think you should go any further. And what about you? I have to go. That could be the resistance. I understand. I uh, feel stupid asking you this, but Aaron wanted me to find some antibiotics for Mark. I know I'm not making it easy on you, but if you're in there and you find some, she... We would really appreciate it. I'll see what I can do. And remember that your gun won't do you any good against Terminators. So when you see one, do what I do. Sneak past them. I'll be waiting for you at the hideout. Take care. Private Jacob Rivers, Pacific Division. Pacific? What the hell happened up there? The whole division went silent. It was wiped out. 
I'm the only one who survived, and I need to meet with Commander Baron. All right, I'll make sure you get to do that. But first, get us out of here. Follow that staircase. It'll lead you to the main generator. Overload it, and turn off the laser grid. Understood. And Rivers, destroying that generator will make a lot of noise. So in case we get separated, where are you stationed? Just south from here. Okay, we'll find you. Baron will want to meet you. Now go, and watch out for those medals. Oh, thank God you're finally here. How did it go? Did you find the soldiers? I did. I helped them escape from that hospital. You don't give up on your people, do you? I like that. So what now? They're supposed to come for me soon. Great. That means that you're going home? No more scavengers constantly nagging you to do things for them? I bet you like the sound of that. Oh, Erin's still up too. Go talk to her. She won't admit it, but she was just as worried as I was. Do you need help with anything? <laughs> Is that your best pickup line? Sorry, that was a bad joke. I, I tend to do that when I'm stressed. I think I got it from my dad. Better that than his mustache, right? Oh, I'm sorry, don't mind me. Seems you were very close. As close as could be. He taught me everything I know. Sometimes without me even knowing. This one time, when I was little, he wanted to make a huge sign that said, Welcome, on the side of our house in Pasadena. So he said, I bet you can't spell that. And of course I had to prove him wrong. Believe me, now I know how stupid that was. Not at all. That was very clever. Yeah. He was always full of bright ideas. Thanks for trying to make me feel better. After Judgment Day, my dad turned our house into a safe haven. A home for everyone who lost theirs. We were like a family with an endless supply of uncles and aunts. I guess my father wanted to help with the war. We never really used guns. So the only thing we could do was to help others in need. Seems like he helped a lot of people. He did. Right till the very end. Anyway, it was actually really cool. Everybody loved him, and he loved having them around. I think it's because he always had a brand new audience to listen to his bad jokes. He had this really terrible one. He'd walk into the room and ask if anyone had seen his remote because his team was playing. <laughs> I always laughed at it. I'll never understand why. Was he a sports fan? I don't think so. He had a jersey that he wouldn't let anyone touch. But I don't think it was a token of his love of sports. More like a reminder of simpler times. <laughs> Look at me yapping. I'm sorry, you probably have enough on your plate. Anyway, thanks. It's really nice to have someone to talk to. No need to worry. I'm fine. <sighs> Who said I was worried? I've been thinking a lot about it. And if I can, I've decided to join the Resistance. I'll do more good there than here. I'm glad to hear that. I just hope you're better supplied over there than we are. Speaking of which... I see you've got those antibiotics I asked for. Good. Now I can call Ryan off. I asked him if he brought a shovel with him. If you think that was too morbid, he said that after Judgment Day, digging graves was one of the few things he actually got better at. Private Rivers. Yes, sir? I've got a message from South Division's Field Commander Baron. She's agreed to meet with you. She set up a rendezvous point at the unfinished metro station. You'll need to enter the canal system under the bridge. The meeting's supposed to take place tomorrow, so I suggest moving out soon. Understood. And, Rivers, because of what you did for our guys at that hospital, I'll give you a heads up about Commander Baron. Don't expect a warm welcome. Is everything all right? Patrick's decided that he wants to be a scavenger. And now he won't come out, even though I'm worried sick he'll get stuck. Get back here right now, Patrick! But there's lots of cool stuff in here. You told me it's our job to find stuff for the group. Your sister is right. Get back here. It's too dangerous. Ah, oh, all right, all right. I'm coming out. Oh, 
What was that all about just now? I've got a meeting with Commander Baron. I'm leaving soon. Okay. I'm going with you. And don't even try to stop me. Are you sure? What's the matter? Don't they let you boys bring dates? Is everything all right? You seem a little out of it. <sighs> Sorry. I probably shouldn't zone out like that with a gun in my hands, huh? Am I making you nervous? Yeah, a little bit. I guess you should be. I don't have any formal training like you. I never even held a gun until... recently. Can I be honest with you? Sure. There's a reason I decided to come here with you. I want to meet Commander Baron myself. They're here. When I heard that Private Rivers of the non-existent Pacific Division wants, no, needs to have a meeting with me, I thought, oh, what a lucky girl I am. But then I started thinking, who is Private Rivers? And why should I treat him as anything other than the deserter he is? So right now I'm hoping you give me a good reason why I shouldn't just skip the court-martial and execute you where you stand. This is bullshit. And who do we have here? A brave scavenger? Rivers, do you always bring unauthorized civilians to fight your battles for you? We would have got to you sooner if you hadn't pulled out all your troops from Pasadena. People died there because of you! And what did you do about it? Did you pick up a gun and fight back? Or did you run like you sewer rats always do? Jennifer's right. There's no need for any of that. Yeah. Today is all about private rivers. So what can you tell me that I don't know already? A few weeks ago, the outpost I was stationed at was ambushed by a Terminator, I think. It was half man, half machine. The entire Pacific Division was wiped out by a single enemy. Half man, half machine? What are you talking about? How did your men let an enemy get that close to you? And we didn't know it was a machine. It could walk, talk, bleed, sweat. There was no way to distinguish it as an enemy. It infiltrated us perfectly. This infiltrator... Is it still alive? I I'm not sure. Okay, for now keep everything to yourself. I don't want any rumors. Especially since you only think you saw something. Skynet's coming! We're not done here yet, Rivers. Take this plasma! You're a resistance soldier. Time to act like one. I'm, uh... I'm sorry about before. And I'm sorry about your soldiers. No need for that. You'll have a hard time getting up every morning if you dwell on that too much. Machines don't do that. And if we want to destroy them, neither can we. Rivers, since Pacific Division no longer exists, you will now answer to me. That makes you a part of TechCom. Congratulations. No more sitting around waiting for Skynet to come to you. Over here we go out there and meet the enemy face on. This is it. Resistance Shelter, South Division. Baron, DN38217. Commander. There with me. Where are the others? Where's my husband? They're dead. Over here's our quartermaster. If you need anything beyond the standard issue equipment, work it out with him. And here's Alvin, residing chief Egghead. Uh, I prefer laboratory director. Like I said, Egghead. He supplies all techcom units with weapon modifications. Everything looks well organized. It is. Everyone pulls their weight here. If someone doesn't, we become weak. And you can probably imagine where I stand on being weak. I'll get right to it. There's a reason I decided to meet you. We intercepted some interesting data. It turns out you're part of a prestigious group. A group of people that Skynet marked for termination. See, John Connor, the leader of the Resistance, is number one on that list. 
then, there's me. I know, I'm flattered. Every day, we lead, we fight, and we plan on how to destroy Skynet Central Core. So I know exactly why we're on that fucking list. But why would Private Rivers be number three? That infiltrator said something about me being marked for termination. Huh. Interesting. I'll have to have a word with Connor about that. And that brings me to my second point, your first assignment. After the Annihilation Line got to Pasadena, Skynet started building installations there. I want you to go there and collect some intel, so we know what we're up against. Sounds dangerous. It will be. Check with Alvin before you go, he'll have something for you. Remember, you might be valuable to Skynet, but the way I see it, you're still a private. Dismissed. Uniform. I hear you have something for me. I do! Commander Baron wanted me to show you how to customize your weapons. Something I've been working on for some time now. You see, your standard phased plasma is in a 40 watt range. However, you can upgrade its damage, shooting rate, or stability using decoded chips. The same ones you've been collecting from fallen Terminators. You can do the upgrades yourself. When you're done, go to the Quartermaster. I believe he has something for you as well. I'm Private Rivers. You got something for me? I've been told you're using old goggles from the Pacific Division. Those aren't even standard issue anymore. Commander Baron asked me to hook you up with the latest version. These babies come equipped with a high-quality camera. What do I do with them? The idea is that when you reach Pasadena, you'll take pictures of Skynet's offensive installations. When you find them, put the goggles on, then aim and shoot. The pictures will be automatically sent to a military satellite that we hijacked from Skynet. They'll give us the necessary intel to prepare for when the Annihilation Line comes. That's it? That's it. We have a place ready for you here when you come back. Before you leave, take a look and see if there's anything else you need. I can get my hands on almost anything, but I don't normally hand out freebies. That's it then. You're leaving us and going back to Pasadena. Not yet. I need to collect the rest of my stuff from our hideout. Fine by me. Let's go. Please, you need to tell me what happened there. Where's my husband? We were ambushed on our way out of the metro station. There was <clears throat> nothing we could do. He died protecting us. I'm sorry. Oh my god. Thank you for telling me this. You did good by telling her. I don't care what Baron says. That woman deserved to hear the truth. Not knowing would destroy her. Believe me, Aaron would kill to know what happened to her husband. I heard about Mark. What happened? It was a close call, but he's on the mend now. And I have to thank you for that. So, thank you. So, what's new with you? I've been ordered to go to Pasadena to collect some intel. Is there anything you need from there? Right now, I don't need anything. But there's something you might be interested in. When we were running away the other day, Colin was supposed to bring something. Boxes of adrenaline, painkillers, and who knows what else. Since he didn't bring anything with him, I'd imagine everything's still there. Those stimulants might be useful to you. When used in small doses, they can improve focus and alertness. If I were you, I'd take a look. You didn't change your mind about joining the Resistance? No. I'm packed and ready to go. You're the one that kept saying that we're going when in fact we're not. Oh, you really pissed me off, I must say. You never told me you had a husband. You never asked. Was he at that camp with you? He was. Sweet little man. I had to take care of him when they sent us to work, because he was so fragile. Back at the camp, I used to think that the machines kept Peter alive to get me to cooperate. So when there was an opportunity to run, we had to take it. And we did. We ran with this little child that I had started to love. I felt that she was mine. 
What was her name? Her name was Taylor. Peter said it sounded too manly, so I said, good, we'll finally have a man in the family. But as you know nowadays, no story has a happy ending. She died shortly after. We buried her, and we stopped talking to each other. Eventually, the Annihilation Line caught up with us. We got separated. I ran away. He did too. At least, I hope he did. That's all. I see you got that bus running again. You didn't think I would, did you? Well, don't wrap me off just yet. I still got it. Anyhow, I got something for you. It's called a termination knife. It's supposed to shut down a terminator with a single stab, so if you sneak in and you want to take them down silently, well, that's your go-to weapon. I guess you could say it terminates terminators. Wow, that was almost as bad as jam. Where did you get that? A group of travelers came by earlier. We traded, talked for a while. Actually, they said something that got my attention. Something about meeting a guy out there who kept asking about Jacob Rivers. He said he didn't seem right. You don't think it's that thing that you told us about before, do you? Sorry, I probably should have said something right away. Have you changed your mind about joining the Resistance? No. No, I have not. I think I'm better off anywhere that bus takes me. I'm moving out tomorrow. Anyone who wants to join is more than welcome to, but I don't suppose you're interested. What's on your mind? You really got me thinking about old Tucker again. In times like these, I wouldn't mind having him around. He always know what to do. He was the only one who didn't lose his mind after Judgment Day. What did he do? Finally found me hiding below the stage. I was such a nervous wreck. So to try to calm me down, he just said, that band sucked anyway. Tucker said, we need to be calm right now. I listened to him. We all did, survivors from the concert. Did you contact the military? Well, we uh, eventually found a military base. We assumed that we were safe. But all we found was one crazy dude responsible for nuclear missiles. His whole job was to watch a button that he might never have to press. Imagine what he felt when Skynet sent those nukes without his knowledge. I wonder if he ever pushed that button after Judgment Day. <laughs> might as well, right? Finally, we found a couple houses, but the people there were as confused as we were. All the communication went to shit. Tucker managed to find some batteries, and uh, we sat in front of our boom box. We started to list cities to avoid. Cities that were hit by the nuclear bombs. How many cities were hit? I don't know exactly how many, but it took him a couple of minutes just to go through the A's. We looked at each other crying. We just wanted to go home and be with family, but Tucker said that for now, the safest place there is is right where we were. So we decided to stay and start a camp. You're going to Pasadena? Yep, I am. I have a mission for you, a secret mission, super important. Probably the most important of them all. What is it? Could you bring me my chalk? Chalk? Yeah, it's at my house. The one with the beware sign on the side. Could you bring it to me? I mean, if you could. I did bring you that bullet one time. I'll see what I can do. Cool. Jacob, how is Pasadena? Uh, you know what? Forget I asked. I don't want to know. I'm just glad that you're all right. And how are you doing? I guess I'm a little nervous before tomorrow. I never asked you. What are you planning to do tomorrow? I've been meaning to tell you earlier, 
but I panicked. And that's because I decided to go with Ryan. We'll find somewhere safe, away from all this. You have to understand, I need to do what's best for Patrick. I'm his big sis. I need to protect him. I... I haven't told him yet. He'll be devastated leaving you and Aaron, but I think it's for the best. Aren't you curious about what happened in Pasadena? No. I think I'd rather keep that place in the past. Actually, I have a confession to make. I've never been outside of Pasadena until now. Can you believe that? Pretty weak for a scavenger. <laughs> I know, right? You'd think a worldly girl such as myself would get to travel a lot, but sadly I didn't. I did my traveling through pictures and postcards that wanderers brought with them. My favorite had a little flamingo drinking water from a lake on it. Its long red neck curved like a snake. Patrick's mother gave me that postcard. Huh. It's funny how I never met my mother, but I was around to see Patrick's leave him. I thought Patrick was your brother. In our house, we were all brothers and sisters. But me and Patrick, we've always had this special bond. Felt what the other one was feeling. <laughs> We'd even get sick together. I remember the day Patrick's mom brought him in. They were both tired and dirty, so we took care of them. Patrick was crying a lot. He was teething at the time. I think that was what scared her away. She just couldn't handle the crying. How was she? I loved her. For the time she was with us, I liked to pretend she was my mother, too. After she took off, I was devastated. But my father said, You need to grow up. You have a brother now. So I burned the postcard. The little red flamingo flew up in flames. And I promised myself I'd never be weak again. But I guess we all need someone we can be weak with sometimes, don't we? Wake up! We need to move. What? What's going on? Everyone, wake up! You need to get out of here. Who the fuck are you? It doesn't matter. What matters is that you can't stay here any longer. She asks a question, and I suggest answering. You don't want to do that. I've got this place rigged with explosives, and there's a detonator in my pocket. You got what? Do you mind? Lower your gun, Ryan. He's the one that saved my life. What do you want from us? You have to get out of here. Skynet's on its way. They finally found you. What do you mean, they found us? They were looking for us? Not for you. For him. He's essential to winning this war. Skynet knows that. That's why they've been following him for months. I have to make sure nothing happens to him. In a couple of minutes, an infiltrator will walk in here trying to kill him. I can't let that happen. We have to bury that Terminator here once and for all. All right, everybody, you heard him. Let's get moving. I'll get the bus ready. There's no time for that. There's a passage here. It will lead you out. Use it. <gasps> what was that? All right, everyone, get out! Jacob! Give me that. It's the same one. It's the same model. Leave! Now! How the hell's he still alive? Go! 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 Watch out! Don't just stand there! Run! Commander, Central Core, it's not here. It was an ambush. Commander! You can't die here. Get up!
Baron, I've got the coordinates. Can you hear me? Where the hell are you? Commander! Rivers, you're alive! What happened here? An infiltrator got in. Brought lots of friends with him. We didn't stand ants. Since they didn't go offline, I assume we did not destroy Skynet Central Core either? No. No, we didn't. It was an ambush. They moved it before we got there. So this is it? We lost? We lost this goddamn war? Not yet. What do you mean? I got the Central Core's real coordinates. You have? I've got to learn not to doubt you anymore, Rivers. We need to call Connor. He may still be able to stop Skynet. Forget it. I couldn't get him on the radio for hours. You need to find him. You need to give him those coordinates. First, let's get you out of here. No. You don't have time for this. You have to leave me here. I can't. You're not going to disobey my final order, are you? Before you leave, I've got a confession to make. There's a reason I wasn't so keen on you from the beginning. Remember that list of people Skynet marked for termination? I lied. I told you that you were number three. The truth is you're number two, just behind Connor. You took my spot, and for the life of me, I couldn't understand why. But now I know. They're coming. You need to leave, now. Use a vent in the command room to sneak past them, and then find Connor and give him those coordinates. Don't worry about me. If they come here, I'll just reason with them. <clears throat> I still have a couple magazines full of arguments. Now go! Good luck, Jacob. The stranger died in that ambush trying to protect me. He came from the future to save my life, and I don't even know his identity. But thanks to his sacrifice, I managed to escape with the Central Core's true location. When I got back to the shelter, I realized that getting that information cost the life of many others as well. I headed out to find John Connor and his North Division to take part in the last all-out attack. Look, we got one. He's wearing a resistance uniform. Who did you kill to get that, you filthy machine? No, no! Wait, he's human! Sorry about that, Sergeant. The infiltrators took some of our key positions, so we're extra cautious. If we'd known that you were joining us in the North Division, that would have never happened. You know who I am. We all do, Sergeant Rivers. John Connor told us about you. He said you'd come and bring those coordinates. How did he know I'd have them? That you'll have to ask him yourself. He's waiting for you upstairs. Commander. Sergeant, Sergeant Rivers. Rivers. I've been expecting you. I took the liberty of collecting the Central Corps' coordinates you brought us. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. Are we preparing to attack the Corps? I've sent a unit to do that. We're getting ready to strike the time displacement equipment. Very soon Skynet will realize that they're losing this war. So they'll try to send infiltrators back in time to prevent that from happening. Do we stand a chance? 
Thanks to the security codes that Mac provided, we've been able to seize control of an HK tank for the first time. It should give us the advantage against Skynet's defense grid. We'll smash it once and for all. I understand that all this might be confusing to you, so if you have any questions, now's the time to ask them. How did you know that the Central Core wasn't at the Observatory? Understanding the changing nature of time travel made me anticipate the most unexpected events. So when I learned from a mutual friend of ours that a Terminator was sent back to our time, I suspected the future I was told would change. What do you mean? When that infiltrator connected to Skynet, it warned them about the attack on the Observatory. They had to move the Central Core, otherwise they would lose again. Unfortunately, the intel we received came at a cost. But if there was any other way, I would have taken it gladly. Who is the stranger? In one alternative future, we reached the time displacement equipment and sent our soldiers back in time. Like always, the mission was to assure the safety of the people Skynet marked for termination. One of whom was you. Knowing the importance of your mission, many volunteered to go back. So I took it upon myself to choose a protector from among them. And the one I chose was you. You are the one you call stranger. Targeted for termination. You're the one who discovered the true location of the Central Core. You're the messenger of the intel that could lead to Skynet's downfall. I'm sure you'll figure out the rest when the time comes. But right now, I want you to get ready. Tonight, soldier, we stop Skynet. Sergeant Rivers, it's time. I want you to take a team of my soldiers and fight your way to Skynet's defense grid. We have to destroy those turrets to get to the TDE, but don't worry. We'll provide the support. It's in your hands now, Rivers. Follow me. Commander? Commander. Commander, what's going on? The 124 destroyed the Central Core and stopped Skynet. So is the war over? For some of us, yes. But just before we destroyed the Core, Skynet managed to send three Terminators back in time. The only thing in our power now is to send the Protectors to meet them. Protectors? The ones that will assure the safety of the people marked for termination. The first Protector has to be Sergeant Kyle Reese. He'll go after the T-800 that's targeting my mother as we speak. By killing her,
Skynet will try to erase me from ever existing. The second one will seek to destroy the T-1000. T-1000? A Terminator made of mimetic polyalloy, sent back to kill me as a child. A single prototype, created by Skynet. It's too powerful for a single human being. That's why we'll have to send a Terminator of our own. Do you have that CPU that Mac reprogrammed? No, I don't. You don't? Then we've got a problem. I don't believe any of our soldiers are capable of stopping the T-1000. We'll have to find another way, and we have to do it soon. Then, there's the matter of the infiltrator that was sent after you. The war can end for you right now, but the question is, are you willing to sacrifice your future to protect your past? By being here, you've already proven that this is not beyond your capabilities. But I'll leave the decision up to you. Will I be able to fix my past mistakes? I always believe that the future's not set. There's no fate but what we make for ourselves. You do have the power to change it, and protect the ones you care about. So, what will it be then? I'll do it. I'll go back. I knew you would. So no one can kill me this time around. Let us begin then. A resistance soldier named Kyle Reese was the first man to go back, to 1984. His objective was to protect Sarah Connor, John's mother. There was no way a human could stand up against the more advanced T-1000. But without Dr. Mack to reprogram an infiltrator CPU, Connor would be forced to find another way to get a machine on our side. I couldn't have someone risk their life to protect me. That's why I decided to go myself. It gave me a chance to right the wrongs of my actions. After 30 years, this war against the machines is finally over. But not all of us live to see the end of it. We never found Baron's body in the shelter. She never stopped fighting. And if she's still alive, I doubt she ever will. She was the leader we needed in wartime. But I'm not sure if she'll find a place during this time of peace. Aaron died in that shelter. She believed that her work was helping win the war, and she was right. I hope now she can finally rest. Ryan stayed in the shelter and died. He was a good man, with a good heart. Jennifer and Patrick died at the hands of Terminators in the shelter. I wish there was something I could have done to make them leave. I executed Mac. Baron was convinced that he was a threat to our cause. As a soldier, I've been taught to obey orders. But this time, I wasn't sure if it was the right decision. And as for me, it was time to start over. Listen to me if you want to live. Baron listened to us. She could no longer deny that this infiltrator was a real threat. She decided to take everyone in, on her terms. The shelter was on high alert, but thanks to the intel I gathered in Pasadena, we slowed the advance of the Annihilation Line and gained some time. 
just enough to start preparing the counterattack. Well, look at you, Sergeant. When you helped us in Pasadena the other day, I was trying really hard not to panic because you were only a private. Sorry for underestimating you. I guess I should salute or something? How's Patrick? Every day a little better. Aaron says he'll be back on his feet in no time. She's done a great job with him. I wish I could repay her somehow. It just doesn't seem that she needs anything. Getting ready for another scavenging run? No, I just came out here to catch my breath. Baron is giving us the entire evening off, believe it or not. Doesn't sound like her. I need to report to Baron. Hey, I'm just catching up with Mark. I'll get back to work in a couple of minutes. You won't tell, right? <laughs> uh, but, but no, seriously, you won't tell, right? Are you alright? Me? Honey, I'm about the most well-adjusted person in this goddamn place. It's the others you should be concerned about. <clears throat> you mean Ryan? Ryan ain't so hot either, but that's another story. Jennifer? I'm worried about her. I'm the one that asked Baron to give her team a little break. Jennifer's been busy scavenging supplies for the soldiers and she hardly had time to see Patrick. And now she's finally got a day off. She's avoiding him like the plague. How's Patrick doing? He's fine, but it wouldn't kill you if you checked on him yourself. Is there anything you need? No. I have to say the resistance is pretty well supplied. Don't tell me you miss running errands for me. I don't believe that for a second. And what about something other than medicine? Honey... I'm not shy. I'll let you know if I need anything, okay? But thank you for asking. Take care. <laughs> Almost gave me a heart attack. You wanted to see me. You're finally here. Good. I have a special task for you. I want you to head downtown to check on the doctor. Doctor? Alvin. He's out there making sure that our defense systems are working properly. Ever since we went radio silent, I had a small team of trustworthy messengers maintaining communication between our outposts. They haven't returned, so I want you to go downtown and see why that happened. Could be nothing, but Connor doesn't want any hiccups while he's up there in North Division preparing the attack on Skynet's central core. Is there a problem with the radio? The Annihilation Line is within spitting distance of downtown. We suspect that Skynet will be intercepting all transmissions from that location. So for now, we're going radio silent. That's why I need you to go there personally. Central core? Skynet's main reactor. The source of all their power. We shut down the central core, we shut down Skynet. Connor's preparing the attack as we speak. So you understand we can't have any critical complications at this stage. If you don't mind me asking, how did you end up here? Excuse me if I act a little surprised, Sergeant. But no one in here thinks it's wise to ask their superior personal questions. But since you did, I'll humor you. So, how did I get here? The same way you did. I was born, raised, then given a gun. We don't really have a say in what we do, do we? Or do I assume too much? Was it any different for you? Hmm? Why do you fight, Sergeant? We don't have a choice. Exactly. We're just going through the motions. Humans were fighting humans since the beginning of time. It just so happens that right now we have a common enemy. If it wasn't for the machines, we'd probably be fighting each other. If that's how you view humanity, are we even worth fighting for? I'm just doing whatever it takes to survive. Saving humanity is just a bonus. Besides, I'm not a fighter. When I go out there in the middle of the night with my Westinghouse, I'm not looking for a fight. I look to seek and conquer. I'm not a fighter. I'm a bully. <laughs> What's the difference? I don't treat them as equals. 
And although I know they're just machines, I want them to fear me. No one ever stands up to bullies. But I have to admit, it has its downsides. One of them being that no one ever asks me a personal question. At least not since Perry died. So congratulations, Rivers. It takes guts to stand up to a bully. I guess since your promotion, you got a little more cocky. Good for you. Sergeant, we're outnumbered, and they keep bringing more wounded. We don't stand a chance. We have to evacuate. Is Alvin still there? He is, sir. Then we're not leaving. We have to bring him back and see what the hell is going on with those defenses, and brief Commander Baron on what's happening here. I'm moving out. You stay here with the wounded. You want me to break the radio silence? At this point, it doesn't matter, does it? Understood. Go ahead, sir. Oh my god! I'm actually glad to see you! What happened here? Why are the defense systems not working? They are working, but their target filtering has been reset to non-hostile. One of Baron's messengers came with the order to temporarily change it, so I did! Baron's messengers? We need to leave now! Yes, let's do that. I'm all for that! Rivers, you want to explain to me what the hell happened? We lost downtown. I know that much. But how's that possible? What happened to our defense systems? Alvin says one of our soldiers came with an order directly from you to reset the target settings for non-lethals. He said what? Ah, uh, all right. This is what I want you to do. Find whoever is responsible for sending that order. All the messengers have GPS tracking, so we're keeping tabs on their location. Find them and bring them to me. Understood. And Rivers, Despite what I might say about our resident egghead, I truly have a hard time believing that my men are incompetent. So expect the unexpected. And you know what I mean by that. Do you think the Infiltrator's back? We won't be sure until you find those messengers and confirm my suspicion. As soon as you know what's going on, radio me. Who's Perry? You mentioned him before. The best soldier I ever fought beside. He was the one who brought me into the Resistance. It's actually a funny story. Years ago, when I was just a kid, I saw a Skynet drone attacking some guy. Without thinking, I grabbed a rock and jumped on it. The guy was screaming the whole time while I beat the metal to the ground. Only when I was done did I realize he was trying to stop me. You killed a drone with a rock? Uh, I was young and stupid. Thank God the drone wasn't really armed, otherwise I wouldn't be here to tell you the story. He was a resistance scientist, and that drone was one of his projects. So you can imagine he wasn't too happy when I smashed it to pieces. But he wasn't alone. There was this huge guy with a rifle on his shoulder, almost choking with laughter. <laughs> I sure made his day. That huge guy? Was that Perry? Yes, it was. Commander Perry was in charge of this division before me. That scientist later told me that was the first time he ever heard Perry laugh. Somehow, Perry and I connected. He taught me how to channel my anger and get it under control. He introduced me to Connor, and that's how I got to the 132nd. Whatever happened to the scientist? <sighs> he was always doing his experiments, trying to outsmart Skynet. One day he fucked up, and because of that he's no longer with us. I'd never thought I'd be reminiscing about the day I met them. This may come as a surprise to you, but it was the first medal I ever destroyed. Sounds like you were late in joining the Destroy Skynet campaign. Before that it was people, not machines. But that's a different story. You want me to break radio silence? They have a head start on us. At this point, we can't afford to lose any time. Got a minute? What's up? I know you're busy, but I found something. Something I think you'll like. A tape from back in the day. I want to play it for you, but my boombox is busted. So, uh, if you're out there and find one that works, bring it to me, okay? Can't you ask Jennifer or one of the other scavengers for help? <clears throat> I already did, but they couldn't find anything. Just think about it, okay?
You're still alive? Good. Apparently Skynet's got a real hard-on for you. So we figured why not use you as bait? Aren't you afraid that Skynet will bring a lot of firepower if they know we're both here? Afraid? No. Prepared for that eventuality? Yes. We've got eyes on the ambush site from every angle. If anyone shows up, it means they were listening. What if it's one of our guys, or just a scavenger? Too bad. We can't have anyone or anything sabotage our plan. Not this time. This time? We were very close once before. For years, we've been preparing for the final attack. But it took just one man to up. That day, Perry... Our previous field commander died, and I inherited control of South Division. Since then, I've been making sure that no one fucks up again. We've got movement. Take position. What do you have? A hooded man's walking down the street. Might be a scavenger. Rivers, you saw him. Is it the same model? Is it the infiltrator? I can't tell. We're waiting for your signal. I think that might be it. You think? Good enough for me. Cease fire! Cease fire! Target down! I repeat, target down! Go check him! Eyes on the target! Proceed with caution! Is he dead? What the fuck? It's the target! You can't get away! Fire at will! There was no doubt anymore. Skynet had created a cybernetic organism. It was designed to blur the line between a man and a machine. People started to think that there were Terminators amongst us, wolves in sheep's clothes. Some of us left, even though we hadn't seen any other infiltrators yet. Or at least, we didn't think we had. And that fear of not knowing was what turned the tide of this war. That night, Skynet won. Uh, I still have to run some tests, so... F for now, I would say no. We need some more time, Connor. I know you don't want to hear this, Commander, but if there's one person who can help us, it's Dr. Mac. Mac... It, we don't even know if he's alive. He is. He's in the Hollywood Hills. We knew a time would come when we'd need him again, so we've kept an eye on him. Wait... You've been watching him without telling me? You let your emotions cloud your judgment before, Commander. That's why I decided that Mac's whereabouts were no longer this your This is bullshit. Concern. He can't just magically fix all of our problems. He's a man, not a god. A man that makes that's mistakes. Enough, Commander. You know what happened last time. He's the reason Perry's dead. I said that's enough. Sergeant Rivers? Yes, sir. Techcom believes that being marked for termination is a badge of honor. A sign that we're doing something right. We wear it proudly. And knowing you're wearing such a badge, Rivers, is all I need to trust you with handling this mission. Commander Baron will fill you in on the details. Good luck, soldier. Over and out. Looks like you're going to Hollywood Hills. Dr. Edwin Mack is the one who taught us how to use Skynet's weapons, so there's a chance he can do it again. Take him that second generation plasma rifle and see if he's able to reprogram it. If we want to use Skynet's weapons, we need to bypass their encryption lockouts. How will I find him? He's obsessed with surveillance. So when you get there, look for any cameras, biometric sensors, or any other tech stuff. He should be around. That's it. Jacob, do you have a minute? Of course. I've heard that you're going to Hollywood Hills. Well, with Baron yelling like that, the whole shelter heard. He wanted me to tell you if I needed anything, so here it is. When you get to Hollywood Hills, could you stop by my old house? It's near the Griffith Park tennis courts. I wonder if Peter went there and left something for me. I know he'd be stupid to go there since now it's behind the Annihilation line, but then again, he was always full of stupid ideas. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Camera. Dr. Mac, is that you? The Resistance needs your help. Mac! It would be a shame to lose that camera. Now, why would you do that? 
Because we don't have time for this. Come out here. Skynet has developed a new Terminator model, the Infiltrator. You've seen one already? We've captured one, and we need your help. Are you there? How do I know you're not an Infiltrator? You've seen them. You know how incredibly lifelike they are, so you should understand my concerns. Head up that hill. Good. Now wait here for a moment. My patience is wearing thin. Why am I even here? Here? On the stage, you mean? Um, because I wanted you to recite a poem. That's right, that's why I got you on this stage, to invoke the fear of public speaking in you. This will allow me to check your emotional response. Very important in these sort of tests. So, if you could go ahead and recite a poem. In the shadows where we live, searching for compassion, Oh, you're actually doing it? I wasn't really expecting that. So, you've been taught to obey orders. I see. Oh, now wait. Be quiet. They regularly patrol this area. Don't let them see you. So you know I'm not a Terminator? Of course I do. They are way better shots than you. Then why are you making me do all this? It looks tempting, but please... Sorry for making you run around like that. But because of the recent increase in Terminator patrols, I couldn't get to that Spider Scout myself. Can I see it? Thank you. I have a gift. That's a token of my appreciation. While you're out looking for my Spider Scout, I used some leftover parts to make a new radio for you. I've been picking up your signal for a while now, and I imagine that Skynet has as well. So, I've made it harder to decipher. You won't have to worry about them eavesdropping. You've been listening, so you know why I'm here. Yes. Now, let me see that gun. What a beauty. I've got to tell you, if Skynet wasn't so gung-ho about killing everything... <laughs> What's interesting about it is that the matter inside is far more condensed. That way, it releases more energy on discharge, dealing much more damage. And also, its plasma blast is violent, so that's different. Can you bypass the encryption lockout so we can use it? Alvin couldn't. Alvin couldn't bypass an egg timer if his life depended on it. I'll do it, but it's not that simple. First, you'll have to bring me Skynet's latest security codes. Security codes? They will allow us to access Skynet's mainframe. But they change them regularly, so I need you to connect to any HK unit and download the newest security codes. To do that, you'll need my code reader. When I was... excused from the shelter, they made me leave all my equipment behind. Alvin should have my code reader. Okay, is that everything? As far as the security codes go, yes. Then I'm moving out. Actually, I've got a question about that infiltrator that you have there. Is it intact? Or more specifically, its neural net CPU? I've been hacking Skynet's units and I'm noticing similarities in their patterns. I think I'm ready to reprogram the CPU from that infiltrator. It's more powerful than any other. Should I ask Baron about that, too? No, 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 she can't know about it. She would not approve. I know how this sounds, but you need to steal it for me. What? I'm the only one that can reprogram that chip. For some reason, Skynet has started to learn at a geometric rate. We need to prepare ourselves for whatever's coming, and I believe that having an infiltrator on our side will give us the advantage. Just think about it. I have to say, you're doing quite well without my help. What are you doing here? You have to get the ones you care about to leave the shelter. They'll be in great danger if you don't do what I say. But remember, Jacob, that has to stay between us. Why? Because things need to play out the way they're supposed to, that's why. I have been here from the beginning, 
Each of your friends already knows the reason they need to leave. You just have to remind them. Can I tell Commander Baron? No, she won't allow it. Then she will start to question you and keep you away from your missions. That cannot happen. Who the hell are you? That, I can't tell you. It could change the choices that you make in the future, and we can't have that. So whatever happens, you can't know my identity. Not yet, at least. Do you know anything about a CPU that Mac wants me to steal? I do. If hacked, we could take over an infiltrator. Dr. Mac is capable of doing that. I'm not so sure if Alvin can. I think you should steal it. I think I'm more confused than I was before. Just stay focused. We'll see each other soon. Hey, Jacob. Did you see Jennifer on your way here? Isn't she here? She hasn't come back yet, but I'm sure she's fine. About Hollywood Hills. How did it go? I've been to Hollywood Hills and found your old house. Did you? I found Peter's body there. They got him, but he left you a letter. <coughs> I'm sorry. I... Uh, I have to get back to work. God knows there's plenty to do. Aaron. What, Jacob? Do you understand what I'm saying? And what do you want me to do about it? Weep for him in front of you? Believe me, I have plenty of sleepless nights in my future. But excuse me if I'm not going to make a spectacle of myself in front of everyone. I want to be left alone now. Huh, you're back. How is Hollywood Hills? Crawling with Terminators. And what about Mac? How's he? Is he compliant? Fine, but he needs Skynet security codes if we want him to reprogram that plasma rifle. Fair enough. Talk to Alvin about that. Okay, I will. Did Max say anything else? He wanted me to steal a CPU from that infiltrator. Huh, of course he did. And since you're telling me this, I'm assuming you're not going to. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Talk to Alvin about those security codes and then come back to my quarters. I'll tell them to let you in. And one more thing, talk to Ryan. That buggy's been sitting there broken for too long. See if something's going on. I've got a suspicion that he's hiding something from me. Uh, you know what? I'm actually jealous of Mac. He's out there alone. No one's bothering him. If I had those working conditions, I would be just as successful as him. He told me that I'll need some sort of a device to download Skynet's security codes from an HK. Do you have it? Yes. About that. Um... Do you remember that day in downtown? I do. It was very traumatic. And because of that, I may have forgotten to bring back some things. Including that device? And the quantum battery which powers it. You won't be able to use it without it. So I guess I'm off downtown. Yes, you do that. Shelter. Oh, I fucking hate living underground. But hopefully we won't have too much longer. Thanks to people like us, this war will end soon. You proved that you'll do whatever it takes no matter the cost. And so will I. Don't think your efforts go unnoticed. You know, I killed a man long before I killed my first machine. And was hurt by a man long before machines hurt me. Apart from plasma burns, I've got man-made scars underneath these tattoos that I'll never forget. On the good days, they don't hurt. And I feel like this world is worth fighting for. On the bad days, they make me want to quit. Give up and run like everyone else. But we're so close. Skynet's almost finished. 
So you can understand I can't run. I need your help, Jacob. I need you to get rid of Mac. He's unpredictable. He sabotaged our mission and killed our men before. I cannot let it happen again. I need you to kill him as soon as he reprograms that rifle. You look shocked. But I think I can find a way to persuade you. If you're into it, that is. I am. That's what I thought. It needs to be done, Jacob. It needs to be done. Commander. I've got the codes. All right, then let's get right to it. Please insert stolen security codes now. Strike a key when ready. And it's done. Like they say, easy money. That's it? With the proper equipment, it only takes a moment. We can fight Skynet with our own weapons. I believe that goes for that infiltrator as well. The first prototype just came out a couple of days ago. Imagine what happens if they become mass-produced. We need to hurry before that happens. That infiltrator has been after us for more than just a couple of days. What do you mean? It's been following me for months. But that simply can't be. That prototype has been out for mere days. It's the same model that destroyed Pacific Division. But I'm connected to Skynet's mainframe and I can see their plans. I'm telling you that what you're saying is not possible. Unless... Oh my god. They will do it. They will finish the TDE. Finish what? TDE, Time Displacement Equipment. For all intents and purposes, it's a time machine. A time machine? Yes, a time machine. You go in, you pick a date, you press a button, and just like that you'll be watching your younger self learning to tie your shoelaces. You know, time travel. Skynet's been working on TDE for a while now. I've been monitoring its progress, but it's still not ready yet. So how could they send anyone back if it's not ready? They didn't, but they will. Don't you see? In one alternative future, they finished TDE and sent a Terminator back to our times. That has to be the one you saw. You couldn't have seen it otherwise. It didn't exist yet. That would explain why they suddenly started to learn at such a geometric rate. This is big. This is really big. So if it's done, then... What the fuck can we do now? We can still fight for this future. Our future. You could stop Skynet before they finish building time displacement equipment and send any more Terminators back. I'm forwarding everything I've learned to Connor. He needs to know. And you go report back to Baron. Speaking of Baron... What are you doing? Did Commander Baron order you to do this? Please, please think about it. I'm the only one that can stop Skynet. You need me. Rivers, just when you thought shit couldn't get any more crazy, this happens. So what now? With the infiltrators coming out and news of a fucking time machine, Connor wants to finish this war fast. Are we prepared? Nowhere near. That's why an all-out attack is our only option. Alvin managed to locate Skynet's central core through the hijacked satellite. It turns out it's right under our nose. It's in the basement of the old Griffith Observatory. So we're moving out? You are. Connor wants me to stay here to coordinate the attack. And his North Division is heading to stop Skynet from sending anything through the time displacement equipment. So this is it. It does seem that way. 
You better get all your things sorted. Take your time. You're leaving in a couple of hours. Dismissed. Jacob? You're moving out? I am. But what about you? I'm part of a scavenging team now. But Commander Baron gave us an order to get back to the shelter. If you see Jennifer, can you tell her that? Okay. Uh, where is she? The last time I saw her, she was upstairs. Nice view. How did you find me? Patrick told me you might be somewhere around here. It's my thinking spot. Is he worried? No, he seems happy. How did he do on your first scavenging hunt together? Well, at first he was excited just to be outside. A little too excited. Some drones spotted him. But I did it. I managed to protect him. Nothing happened. And from that point on, he understood how dangerous a scavenger's life can be. See, you'll make a great scavenging team. Yeah, I'm starting to see it that way. And because of that, I was thinking... About leaving? <laughs> I don't have any secrets from you, do I? Yeah, about leaving. With Patrick. You know, I, I think you should stay. This is not a time to think about personal problems. There's a war to fight. Spoken like a true soldier. But you know what? You're right. <laughs> it's probably incredibly selfish of me to even consider leaving. Especially now this war is about to end. I'll stay. Support the cause. Maybe even start faking enthusiasm while talking to Baron. You're always looking out for me. Thank you for that. I know you're moving out soon, but there's something I want to say. Regardless of what happens later, I hope that we'll find each other. Thank you for always being there for me. I'm... I've got the codes. All right, then let's get right to it. Please insert stolen security codes now. Strike a key when ready. And it's done. Like they say, easy money. That's it? With the proper equipment, it only takes a moment. We can fight Skynet with our own weapons. I believe that goes for that infiltrator as well. The first prototype just came out a couple of days ago. Imagine what happens if they become mass-produced. We need to hurry before that happens. That infiltrator has been after us for more than just a couple of days. What do you mean? It's been following me for months. But that simply can't be. That prototype has been out for mere days. It's the same model that destroyed Pacific Division. But I'm connected to Skynet's mainframe and I can see their plans. I'm telling you that what you're saying is not possible. Unless... Oh my god. They will do it. They will finish the TDE. Finish what? TDE, Time Displacement Equipment. For all intents and purposes, it's a time machine. A time machine? Yes, a time machine. You go in, you pick a date, you press a button, and just like that you'll be watching your younger self learning to tie your shoelaces. You know, time travel. Skynet's been working on TDE for a while now. I've been monitoring its progress, but it's still not ready yet. So how could they send anyone back if it's not ready? They didn't, but they will. Don't you see? In one alternative future, they finished TDE and sent a Terminator back to our times. That has to be the one you saw. You couldn't have seen it otherwise. It didn't exist yet. That would explain why they suddenly started to learn at such a geometric rate. This is big. This is really big. So, if it's done, then what the fuck can we do now? We can still fight for this future. Our future. You could stop Skynet before they finish building time displacement equipment and send any more Terminators back. I'm forwarding everything I've learned to Connor. He needs to know. And you go report back to Baron. Speaking of Baron... What? What? 
What are you doing? Did Commander Baron order you to do this? Please, please think about it. I'm the only one that can stop Skynet. You need me! Rivers, just when you thought shit couldn't get any more crazy, this happens. So what now? With the infiltrators coming out and news of a fucking time machine, Connor wants to finish this war fast. Are we prepared? Nowhere near. That's why an all-out attack is our only option. Alvin managed to locate Skynet's central core through the hijacked satellite. It turns out it's right under our nose. It's in the basement of the old Griffith Observatory. So we're moving out? You are. Connor wants me to stay here to coordinate the attack. And his North Division is heading to stop Skynet from sending anything through the time displacement equipment. So this is it? It does seem that way. You better get all your things sorted. Take your time. You're leaving in a couple of hours. Dismissed. Jacob? You're moving out? I am. But what about you? I'm part of a scavenging team now, but Commander Baron gave us an order to get back to the shelter. If you see Jennifer, can you tell her that? Okay. Uh, where is she? The last time I saw her, she was upstairs. Nice view. How did you find me? Patrick told me you might be somewhere around here. It's my thinking spot. Is he worried? No, he seems happy. How did he do on your first scavenging hunt together? Well, at first he was excited just to be outside. A little too excited. Some drones spotted him. But I did it. I managed to protect him. Nothing happened. And from that point on, he understood how dangerous a scavenger's life can be. See, you'll make a great scavenging team. Yeah, I'm starting to see it that way. And because of that, I was thinking... About leaving? <laughs> I don't have any secrets from you, do I? Yeah, about leaving. With Patrick. You know, I think you should stay. This is not a time to think about personal problems. There's a war to fight. Spoken like a true soldier. But you know what? You're right. <laughs> it's probably incredibly selfish of me to even consider leaving. Especially now this war is about to end. I'll stay. Support the cause. Maybe even start faking enthusiasm while talking to Baron. You're always looking out for me. Thank you for that. I know you're moving out soon, but there's something I want to say. Regardless of what happens later, I hope that we'll find each other. Thank you for always being there for me. I'm lucky to have someone like you. Thank <laughs> you.